for fast, cheap, and reliable Madden 23 coins. Make sure you guys go check out my sponsor, AOEAH.com. Use code VENOM at checkout for 3% off your order. Back from the video, and today we're going to be bringing you guys a, another offensive gameplay. You guys have been showing a lot of love on these, and what it is is just going to be an unedited, you know, raw kind of gameplay of me talking through every single play. I don't, you guys seem to like these better because you get to see the plays that don't work versus the plays that work. I explain why things are you know working and overall it still help you understand the scheme better. Say scheme of choice is going to be deuce close. This was highly recommended. I've mentioned in the video originally of that, that I could bring a gameplay and a lot of you guys said you wanted to see it. So here we are going to bring it now. Uh, playbook of choice is going to be the Washington football team. I know a lot of people hate it when I call it that, so I'm just gonna keep calling it so you guys can keep commenting. So now we are using Tennessee. They don't have the best offense, but you know, we work with what we got. You're gonna put stretch in there. You're going to replace this play with PA misdirection. And then I like to throw in a PA stretch shot. So overall your audible stretch, misdirection, bench and stretch shot. Uh, of course, some other good plays, things like tight end angle. There's a halfback wham that you can rock with, but overall it's a pretty heavy run scheme. You want to pound that rock if you are able to. We're facing Indianapolis as we get deal with some lag. I am installing 2K right now, so hopefully that doesn't make us lag terribly. But um, yeah, so we're facing the Colts. Got a little divisional matchup. You always love to see those. But yeah, we're gonna keep things relatively simple. Here we're just gonna go with Y on a drag. We're gonna smart out B to get them a little bit shorter. And then we have a corner out on the short side if we could hit it. I actually like to leave the play actions usually. Here we got Traylon Burks wide open. We're actually able to pass him up and we might get into the end zone on this. Believe it or not, Traylon Burks, the rookie, showing up big with his first reception right there. So I didn't expect that to go to the house, but he was running cover too. I think he might've been using in the mid read. So we were able to fit that in over the top. And again, you know, just keeping things simple. You have a little deeper crosser, backside post, you have a drag, and then you have a corner out. Also, what I'm doing is I'm, I usually like to keep the play action for those plays. Reason being is it can confuse the user. It usually can fool the user, make him think that it is a run play when actually it's not. So overall, you can't have a much better first drive. Uh, now I mentioned that it's a pretty heavy run scheme. I would say try to keep close to a one-to-one -one ratio. Typically when you're passing under center, you don't want to have to put the ball in the air that many times. I almost just dropped my controller, but um, yeah. So I guess y'all, good thing I didn't pause, but defensively we're going to be running the nickel over formation, nickel over. Uh, I'm just going to be trying out some stuff in this. I've been running nickel through three most of the year. So uh, we are going to go into this. Using, he's gonna go to the ground and we are all over that with our user. The reason Nick Glover is good and more popular is because it's really good against the run and the pass. Nickel 3-3 has some kind of weaknesses usually involving the run game, but with the pass, or yeah, but with this formation, um, it's pretty sound everywhere. So you can definitely, you know, mix things up. That's a bag, and that is why we send the heat. We didn't even really send that much heat. All we did was send six. He blocked five out of cover four, and we get the pressure. I'll show another way to run that as well. Now, um, we're just going to pinch those guys, blitz them, and then what we're going to do is just stand in the gap with Cunningham, see if we can get the pressure. It doesn't get through here, but he's going to throw it right at Zach Cunningham, the former Houston Texan. We're going to kind of run backwards slightly just because I want to um, – get more yardage on offense, which is kind of understandable. It looks like it didn't matter. He's going to head out of here. So uh, at least I'm guessing maybe it's a rage pause, but all signs are leading towards him conceding the game. And then we'll go ahead and hop into another one. If that is the case, what you're going to do, maybe sending me a rage message. Who knows? I didn't do anything toxic there. That was just good coverage and um, a good user. So we'll see what he's going to go with. He has a 30 second timer. Um, maybe he's just trying to DC me. We'll wait the 30 seconds, which should be coming up soon. Um, and yeah, so I guess we're gonna stay in here. Not mad at it, um, but just kind of curious on the decision to pause that. So 
since you have all those stuff in your audibles, typically what you do is just come out in a different place. So I'll always come out in tight end angle and then I can audible to something else if need be. We're gonna try and establish this stretch a little bit more because it is such a good run. Here we're able to get out to the outside now. Usually you wanna be spamming A. I was a little bit late there, but spam A, especially if you have a bigger back like a Jonathan Taylor or a Derrick Henry or a Leonard Fournette because then they get a stiff arm. Even guys like Javante Williams, they stiff arm or you get the tackle battle, which you're spamming A, you're gonna shove them off immediately like you have the arm bar ability. So it's definitely something that I'm a fan of, I would say. Uh, so what are we gonna do here? Let's go with, uh, let's go to a quick bench play. See if we can just hit a short route. He's going with mainly coverage. So if it is cover three. We're just gonna throw this quickly to our tight end, which we do have a low tight end. Maybe I should have picked a team with a better second tight end. I don't know that there's that many teams with two good tight ends. Um, who even does have two really good tight ends? Uh, not exactly sure of a team that comes to mind. There used to be some teams, but I guess probably the 49ers, you have Juice Check and then you have Kittle, so you could throw them kind of like that. But, uh, and also with Bench, I wish it was to where you could throw the streak kind of somewhere else, so. We're just gonna go with A on the streak, Y on the drag. I'm gonna keep the play action again. We do get kind of shedded here. We're just gonna check it down and not much to say about that, but I guess we'll just take our three here. That probably keeps them in the game a little bit longer, but uh, that probably should have been a, that would have been a first down. Can't do much about that, but you no, know, it is what it is. That's what we get for using Tennessee. It might have to put in Malik Willis if we're gonna get inaccurate balls. We might as well have a QB who has a rocket arm instead of Tannehill, or and can actually move. Or Tannehill can move, but you know what I mean. Someone who can like electrically move. Tannehill's not that, but yeah, certainly an interesting start to the game. And I guess we'll see what he can cook up on offense or defense, is definitely holding it down. I should be running the ball a little bit more, so we'll definitely start running the ball twice in a row, things like that too. Uh, Cause again, our weapons are not good, particularly Robert Woods is our number one. That's never a good sign, but it is better than the Packers. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to keep running this cover four, and again, all I'm doing is pinching everybody and I'm blitzing everybody. Now, you don't really have the uh, looping angle, but he actually does loop. Nice dot there. Expecting him to kind of wait on that, but good to slants laser. So, yeah, what I was talking about with the player is you see the left linebacker in this case. It is David Long. You see with his play art, he um, it looks like he's facing inside on that previous play, but he actually ends up looping. He's looping here gonna go to the ground which is bad but Jeffrey Simmons who is uh, I think the most underrated player in the league potentially see on this play you see how he's like looping inside he actually ends up running outside and that's probably because I'm hovered but it's something to note I actually maybe should have played with someone like the Colts but I already used Jonathan Taylor for the thumbnail there you see the example of cover four. Oh my god terrible tackling there you see the example of cover four hurting you um, Again, sometimes just simple weird drags and crossers can beat it. So that's why you don't want to stay in cover for too long. Now we're going to go back to man coverage again. He doesn't have too many guys who will just straight up beat the man coverage besides a guy like a Pittman. So we're just going to hover here. We got a screen and that was going to be a pick six. If our stupid D line would have just noticed that I'm you know, shooting right there. That's always how it goes though. Now he's going to throw a touch on this play, huh? But yeah, we're just pinching everybody. We're just kind of standing here. We engage. We're going to get pressure. Yeah. Play action against that will never work. Never run play action against blitzes. It's not Madden 21 or 22 where you have escape artists and you run PA boot over, cancel the play action, sprint out of the pocket. It's not the case. Uh, here we're going to go back to our quarters. We're just going to play uh, coverage. In this case, I like to just use the three rec hook. Depending on if um, it's a bunch, I would use the safety. Here he should go deep and we have Fulton right there and he didn't get the interception. He actually got burned badly. So I, I don't even know that I was pressed, but thankfully Matt Ryan and him decide to go with a lob pass. So interesting take. I would have bulleted past that, would have given him a chance, but to each in their own, he's going to go with a fake pass, which is what I expected. I actually got freaking burnt, but 
Noodle arm. We don't even get the pick, but we get the early breakup. Now, is he going to quit? He's not. Mm, all right, respect. I might try and get some wham going. We have some, or yes, he quit. So we'll hop into another game. All right, so we're going to go ahead, hop into game number two here. And we're facing the Bills. This is a day game. We do get the ball first, which is a plus. Um, and we'll see what we can do offensively with this game. Now he's going to go with a kick to the right. We're just going to let that out of the end zone. Generally, if they kick it all the way to the right, try and let it go unless it's your fullback. Um, but again, set up our audibles the same. We'll go with stretch, PA stretch shot, and then misdirection. See if we can fit in some other stuff. This game, like a counter, I do not hate the counters this year, so I try and run the counter a decent amount when I'm running this formation. But uh, yeah, he's starting out in a, uh, looks like a 4-3 even 6-1. And King Henry is off to the races. Not his best idea running that 4-3, even 6-1 against this formation. But King Henry is going to get in that end zone very quickly for us and can't ask for a much better start than that. Um, it was cover four, so maybe he wasn't even sending blitz. But when you run that kind of a formation, you either have to shoot straight through the gap, which he did not do. He backed up immediately. Or what you go on ahead and have to do is just make the tackle. So... He obviously whiffed, we cut inside, which he was probably not expecting. Although he should have been, because that was really the only option. But uh, yeah, good start for us nonetheless. That's what this formation can do, very good on the ground. And we've had a little bit of success through the air. So see what he can do offensively now. Weird hit sick hurdle animation. And once again, we are going to be in the uh, Nickel over formation. Let's get our boy Caleb Farley in there. Let's get our boy Harold Landry in there. So, see what he's doing on offense. Um, what meta formation he's running. Trips tight end. Trips tight end. Interesting. So, we're probably not going to set up pressure. I kind of want to feel him out, see what he's doing first. We're gonna cancel the baseline so that outside quarter is a little bit more inside just in case he does run something like a corner route. This is a passing play, so we'll pass commit. We are going to, uh, yeah, PA counter go. And he actually fried us. He had the tight end open, so that is another thing where you kind of want to bring that corner in because it can't get you, but everything else is bagged. We're gonna switch up to a cover six here just so that that tight end is less open and I'm actually able to use a revert hook. Um, yeah, we just got to get some pressure against trips tight end. It's kind of the key. Now I'm not going to send pressure every play, but we kind of want to, you know, send a little bit. You also want to bluff the pressure, you know, make him think that we're running. Looks like he's going to pass the ball heavy, which is nice. I like playing against those passers. Everything is bagged once again. We just got to get some quick pressure. Uh, now, the Bills' offensive line isn't exactly the best, and we should be getting a little bit better pressure. I don't know why Bud Dupree is such a low overall, by the way, but yeah. Now, we do have match on as well, so make sure that that is on in your coaching adjustments, match coverage. Oh, no, that is not open. I don't know what he's doing, but that corner out was bagged, and it's going to be a fourth and ten for him. See what he's going to do. I mean, you got a choice. He's going to go for it. Once again, all I'm doing is running stock cover six. This is nothing special, boys. I'm pass committing as well just to see if we can get some better shots because obviously he's throwing. He's making this many hot routes. He's going to go with some motion. It's not really going to make a difference against this coverage, but we are going to kind of lurk over there briefly. And that's a good dot by him. If I had a faster user, maybe I would have been over it. But in that case, I'm using a linebacker. So maybe we'll make that adjustment to get a uh, safety there. I'm not sure who has any speed, but we want at least a little bit more speed than that. Just because there's no shot at recovery. Let's see if he runs the ball. There's no hot routes. He's passing. We got a safety out there, see if we can be a little bit more athletic. We don't really need the linebacker because of the run. 
there. You would have loved to see some kind of a match coverage from either your three rack hook or your quarter flat on the drag. But like I said, the crossing routes throw it off sometimes. So this is why you want to switch between coverages. Now we're back in cover four. So and now we're using the safety. He's going to flip to a gun bunch against bunch. What I like to do is flip as well. And I like to use your Bayard. It's probably going to go corner out. I like the baseline press against the corner outs. And he's throwing a risky pass right there. I'm not sure how he caught it and then broke the tackle. That's just Madden 23 for you, but... He's playing with fire here, um, throwing a lot of contested balls, living life on the edge. If he is going to continue to go to bunch, I like the cover four regular versus that. And I think I can bait him into something here on that left side if he wants to go with the streaker corner out. So we're going to come in the box. We don't want him to run the ball, especially in the red zone. It's difficult to move the ball, so we want to put an emphasis on that. He's going to go with drags and just got a tackle. I'm going to switch to a hard flats here knowing that he probably doesn't have a corner out. And if he does, our outside routes should bag. So we're gonna take our match off and we're gonna go flats at five. And then we're gonna hard flat. So we're shading underneath. Really what can get open here is the seam. So I'm gonna try and lurk seams quickly, specifically with Dawson Knox. We're gonna pass commit again, since he used motion and Apparently there's just nobody there. Our three rack hook is just not playing that. So uh, we're gonna go hooks, zero. See if we can bait him into something. He's probably just gonna run the ball honestly, but if he doesn't, we might have something for him. Oh my God, there's no way. That's literally a pick six. What are you doing? Oh my God, there's no way. That's gotta be an interception, dude. There's no way he's throwing directly at him. If that's me, that's a pick all day. He's standing right there. You gotta make that play. Oh my God, what is he doing? He's standing right there. You gotta, you just gotta make that play. I mean, come on, like, I can't believe you threw the bubble right at him and we didn't get anything on that. That's a wild. He's gonna pinch his D-line here, which is an adjustment. We're still gonna flip to the left. If our blocks hold up, we have a lot of daylight. Uh, so we're definitely gonna continue to run the ball. Get off me. He's sending pressure out of cover four, which means he probably doesn't have flat zones. Um, so we're gonna look to the flats pretty heavy. You know, just looking at the play art, he could be adjusting into anything like a cover two, but if that was any indication, these guys are in deep zones to not give up anything big, so. <sighs> if, our, if we could just steal the edge, they get such fast outside leverage on that, that it's kind of difficult to do something there. Henry. Might be tired, but he should be good now that we got our uh, little break from the first quarter. And again, Deuce Close is a symmetrical formation, so he should be chilling either way. Yeah, and he's leaving the flats wide open, so. Easy reads. So 
we just leave in the middle of the field wide open. And then he hard flat it over there. So we just want some quick routes, like a slant. Backside streak on the other side. I like this formation because it has a dive you can audible to. Keep that in mind. So um, having the single back wing slot in your audibles is nice. See if we can just throw them off with this again. You see how the left side could be open for a little cutback. Somehow two alignment on one D line just doesn't work and he still gets through. But you saw that's open, so just mixing it up is very helpful when you're facing or when you're running the ball, switching formation, seeing things open up. I'm going to run straight at him here and see if it works. What I'm going to do is also motion this guy over since he's base aligned. Uh, I was going to throw it immediately to B, but he backed off. Smart adjustment. We're going to hit Robert Woods, though. Bobby Trees. Yeah, so just game, it's a game of chess right now with his defense. When they're playing the super aggressive blitzing defense, you take what the defense gives you. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing, playing smart, controlling the clock moderately. He didn't move down the field relatively fast, so we have a chance here to make this potentially the last play, last drive of the half, which is good clock management. So uh, yeah. See what we can do. I'm going to audible again and run this stretch. I am tempted to run straight at him. I might actually try. Um, we're going to run straight at him. Comes down to the user. We can see that his user is a little bit iffy in the run game. So I'm at the two yard line. What I'm going to do is go to my coaching adjustments. I'm going to throw ball carrier on aggressive. Come out and wham, we can audible once again. He's probably gonna, he can't really come out in a heavier set than he's been in, so there's not too much of a concern for anything different that we've seen unless he's switching to a goal line or something other than that. So again, same formation, I'm gonna audible. I'm going to put a shotgun here and we're gonna see if we can catch him off guard with this, specifically with Traylon. And that should have been some kind of weird pick six. I don't know what my blocker was doing. I was expecting him to block. I actually never ran that play before. You see the player, he should have been blocking, but I guess we get into the end zone nonetheless. Um, that play should have worked a lot easier. Maybe if I was on the wide side, but for whatever reason, our outside receiver looked like he ran a slant route. But there we have a good drive of our own. His drive was 10 plays. Our second drive is now 10 plays. And it's going to be interesting to see if we can hold them off before half. We don't want to give up a touchdown. That's the worst case scenario. Um, would be like a 10 seconds left touchdown. Ideally, you're able to hold them to nothing, get a stop. But holding the three, you can't be mad at in this situation, I suppose. We'll just see what he's doing. He's going to be doing the same thing that he has been. But I feel like we should be able to adjust around this. Very important that you remember that in the goal line, you set up some audibles, some stuff like that. So it is important. What I'm gonna do is put this guy in a hard flat, hope that the rest of our adjustments take care of themselves. Just because that drag is just a little bit concerning. A little corner out there. He's gonna have the streak wide open, but he made a terrible read and the aggressive adjustment paid off. It might've not been the best adjustment, but it did pay off. The hard flat and we get the stop um he's gonna see that so we probably got to switch up our philosophy in the second half because he's just gonna start realizing that if he's patient he has touchdowns all over the board um i was shocked that he did not take that but we're not mad at it at all again we're gonna audibly it's very frustrating defensively you're facing a runner who's just gonna continue to audible 
He knows what we're doing, but can he stop it? We're gonna motion Bobby Trees out to pick up that outside block, and we're just gonna run straight at him. And this should be something like a touchdown. Derrick Henry, we're just gonna take our touchdown. You know, so maybe if we're playing it smart for money. Okay, and looks like he's actually gonna head out. He is gonna head out, so very good game. That was against a little bit of a better player than that first game, so I hope you got to see some more realistic stuff of what you would do when you're facing someone who knows what they're doing. Because that first game, you obviously know that guy was kind of a bot. The second game, that guy was good. He had a scheme on offense, he had a scheme on defense. His offense was not bad, but that's an example of what some of the things you can do out of deuce close against someone who knows what they're doing. So overall, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you drop a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below, and peace, I'm out of here.